internet. I'm Caitlin, aka C.E. Hoffman, and it's the launch week of my Kickstarter. <laughs> my $350 aim will publish 50 copies of my feminist punk poetry collection, Miss Spiritual Tramp of 1948. Anything extra I get, I will use to continue publishing my words and the words of others. Okay, first, uh, a word of warning here. I do not know how to edit videos. Your attention span will have to withstand a continual thought stream falling out of my mouth. For my part, I will try to avoid a meme. Okay. <laughs> I've promised to release a video each week discussing a topic somehow pertaining to my poetry book. This week, I want to talk about nudity getting naked, bearing it all, and what this means to me as a sometime stripper and full-time dreamer. I maintain that stripping and writing are effectively the same. Exposing oneself to others so they may expose themselves to you. Obviously, there's a lot of vulnerability in self-exposure, authenticity, emotional nudity, whatever you want to call it here. That's probably why our current society scorns its very existence. Except, vulnerability is the natural state of being human. Enough pressure on our skin breaks it. Enough pressure on our brains can make us crack. <laughs> As an empath and sensitive, these sensations are arguably heightened for me, though I believe every human bears the capacity to feel everyone and everything. I grew up without the luxury of detachment. And I'm glad. I mean, when I was in a state of resistance, my empathic abilities were always used against me. I was bullied, I experienced tremendous anxiety, and as I moved into my teens, I was weighed down with a misery I couldn't even articulate. I attempted suicide when I was 13. This thrust me into spiritual crises, and I am so grateful. Because without those experiences, I honestly wouldn't be here talking to you. Now that I've consciously moved into a place of acceptance and understanding, my nakedness has only ever served me. I think everyone could stand to get a little more naked. Okay, Winston Roundtree released this series called People Watching. It's awesome. You should watch it. The first episode is called Why Speed Dating Sucks. <laughs> One of the feature characters is a stripper. She's an actual professional stripper, unlike me. You know, she's got long hair, big boobs, she knows all the pull tricks, and she decides to invoke radical honesty while conversing with prospective dates. This honesty acts as a sort of contagion through the speed dating group, leading to some awkward moments, as well as enriching encounters. Okay, context is very important here. True intimacy, true nakedness, is dependent on mutual exchange. We all have comfort zones, we all have boundaries, and experiences, varied experiences, which need to be given space. I, for one, need to recognize, as a person with white privilege, it's safer for me to be emotionally naked, especially in public. That's what nakedness is about, too. Owning your shit. <sighs> Further to that, in a sense, I used to experience total strangers purging their innermost secrets to me. You know, in waiting rooms, at bus stops, suddenly my cashier would get really real and start purging it all. It, this still happens, though less frequently, since I've learned to erect more energetic boundaries. I mean, boundaries can be good too, right? It's all about that balancing act. Let's say this person sharing is within my emotional capabilities at the time. Great. That's nakedness. That's intimacy. But you can't go vomiting your feels on anyone anywhere. It's the difference between being naked and flashing someone. Flashing someone is obviously uncool. Of course, art becomes an interesting challenge here. You chose to watch this video, and you may or may not choose to read my poetry, though I hope you do. <laughs> this, I suppose, is where content warnings have merit, as well as being conscious of other people. 
I have family members who are less than thrilled with what I was doing in Ontario. I can hold space for that, but I can't let it halt my own journey. We all have to make our own choices. We're gonna mess up, say too much or not enough, but we have to allow for the wonderful screw-ups of spontaneity. Which brings me to another thought regarding nudity, imperfection. You know, I contemplated uh, putting on makeup for this video. I didn't. Now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with enjoying makeup as an artistic expression, though I believe people can use it as a mask. I used to wear makeup all the time, and it came to the point where I hated how my face looked without it. It took a lot of unlearning, a lot of daring to be bare, to learn to appreciate the natural beauty and handsomeness of my features. I get it. I get being scared. Sometimes you put yourself out there and the response is devastating, <laughs> or even worse, mediocre. We want to project what we consider the best version of ourselves. The version who looks good, doesn't have bags under their eyes, the version that is a happy, confident success. We're enamored with overnight success stories, yet we never want to hear about the countless, fa countless failures <laughs> leading up to that point. We don't want to show the bloatedness, the blemishes, the scars, the stretch marks, all of that which, in my opinion, makes us truly perfect and unique. I mean, more and more I see people embracing and integrating their flaws, whether spiritual or physical, and that's really exciting. We're rejecting our airbrushed universe. We're on the path to self-love, which goes hand in hand with self-expression. In the movie Kill Your Darlings, there's this imagined altercation between a young Allen Ginsberg, aka Daniel Radcliffe, and one of his professors. The professor is emphasizing rhyme and meter in poetry. He compares a poem lacking these attributes to an untucked shirt. Allen Ginsberg, aka Daniel Radcliffe, counters with, how do you explain Whitman? He hated rhyme and meter. The whole point was untucking your shirt. I go one step further. I say, fuck the shirt. <laughs> or to quote Tessa, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, Bilecki, Bilecki? Anyway, to quote this wonderful writer. <clears throat> the making of humanity is our unmasking. Off with all our masks, veils, disguises, the sophisticated tricks we use to hide our humbling animality. <sighs> That's where poetry comes in for me. I'm not a real poet, per se. I consider myself a real writer. I've written books, screenplays, articles, short stories, songs, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm content to dress these up and down, whereas poems are happy being naked. That's why I want to start by releasing a book of poetry. I came into this world naked and vulnerable, and I want to come into the world of publishing naked and <laughs> vulnerable. <sighs> Full disclosure, I have been published, but this feels like a new beginning. This is the first time I've had real control over my work. The poems in this collection are intimate. Some are dark, some are silly, they're messy and sexy and spiritual, and that's not for everyone, and that's okay. If anything I've said resonates, I'd appreciate your donation. Even if you disagree with everything I've said, donate anyway, leave a comment, maybe you'll change my mind. Speaking of, some of you may be thinking, well, you're a stripper, you don't need my money. Well, I haven't been working since I arrived in Halifax. Evidently, the closest good strip club is in New Brunswick. 
My partner has been supporting us while I take odd jobs. So there's a lot of nudity in this, the humility in asking for help. So that's all folks, I've rambled on for 10 minutes, holy shit. Kudos if you got through this. Uh, like if you like, subscribe if you vibe, comment if you're called to, and donate if you can. The link to my Kickstarter is down there in the video description. And do check out other Kickstarter campaigns. There's lots of worthy art out there. Thank you for being naked with me. I'll see you next week.